Hi, I'm Monique Reiser, and I'm the Deputy Director of Spouse Programs here at MOAA. And I'm Steve Strobridge, MOAA's Director of Government Relations. We're going to take a few minutes today to talk to Steve about something that seems to be a very hot topic these days, and that is sequestration. Steve, let's start with a little bit of history. What is sequestration and how did we get here? Well, sequestration is just a long word for uh, forced across the board budget cuts whenever federal spending exceeds some statutory limit. Uh, how we got here is a long story. You know, you, you, we've, we've had larger and larger deficits over the last uh, five or six years. Uh, and Congress has recognized, and just about everybody in the country has recognized that can't go on forever. Um, but what Congress almost always does is it finds it very hard either to raise taxes or cut spending. So sequestration, is, in essence, is Congress' answer to say, in essence, I can't do my job. I'm going to put something in the law that forces us to cut back where Congress can't make, a, can't make individual decisions and you take across the board budget cuts uh, rather than trying to uh, pick and choose where it's gonna fall. So Steve, these sequestration cuts, what are we really looking that we could lose? Well, it, it might actually be easier to start with what would not be cut. Looking at the whole government, um, Social Security would be exempt. Most of Medicare is exempt and the, the small part that isn't probably wouldn't be visible to, to beneficiaries. Uh, the whole VA budget is pretty much exempt. Um, on the military side, TRICARE for Life is exempt for people over 65. Uh, military retirement and survivor benefit plan uh, programs are exempt. Uh, for the most part, wounded warrior programs are exempt and non-appropriated funds. So there's a, a range of things that are not gonna get hit. And that's, that's kind of the good news. Yeah, so you're saying there, but there are a lot more things that are going to be cut. And so when we're looking at the Department of Defense, what should families and service members be thinking about um, that could get cut? And how much money are we talking about? Well, for the, the first year, the, the year that we have to deal with right now, fiscal year 2013, it's $46 billion that has to be cut out of the DOD budget between now and the end of September, Wow, which is a huge cut. Uh, and when you're talking 10 years, uh, over the space of 10 years, $450 billion have to be cut. So the first year is kind of typical mm -hmm. for, for what's going to happen in the out years. Um, and the kinds of things that are at risk, I said on TRICARE, mm -hmm. for the over 65s are exempt. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Currently serving people and the under 65s are not. TRICARE uh, uh, coverage for them is not exempt. Um, commissaries are, are not exempt. The operations and maintenance, the biggest single area where I think a lot of this is going to get hit is, well, military personnel and pay accounts were exempt, federal civilians were not. Okay. And if you are military and you think that's not going to affect you, you need to think again. Because when you look at health care, for example, 40% of all the people who deliver military health care are federal civilians. And under this law, the federal civilian cut, they're gonna have to take off basically a day a week mm -hmm. for the rest of the year. So you can say, what does that impact? Well, it means the people who are making appointments, mm -hmm. the people who are making uh, the phone calls, the people who are uh, managing and maintaining the equipment, and in some cases, the people who are doing the x-rays, are not going to be there. So there 20 could be of the time. less availability exactly. for a lot of the services. It may be harder for you to get an appointment. Uh, it may be that DOD has to delay payments to doctors so that when you file a claim, your doctor may wait a month for a payment. If I could ask another question, we hear about cuts to personnel um, within the military. We already know that there is a is normal attrition but we are reading and hearing about more cuts to personnel levels within the Department of Defense um, on the military side. Is that a possibility? Well, it, it gets a little confusing because there's a whole lot of things going on besides sequestration. Okay. Even before sequ the sequestration deal came in, 
the, the budget had been cut and the, the administration had already said, we we're gonna cut uh, uh, thousands and thousands of people uh, over the next 10 years, uh, or excuse me, over the next five years. Now, personnel has been exempt for this year. So that means we're not gonna pile additional cuts on for this year, but there's no guarantee after this year. And that's where it gets confusing because even though you've had that exemption, uh, DOD has made it pretty, pretty claim that if we have to take these big cuts over the next 10 years, we're probably gonna have to cut some more people, maybe another 100,000 military people. So Steve, you've listed a lot of things, and um, one thing I wanted to ask about was wounded warrior programs. You said those would be exempt, um, but it sounds like there's always some side effects. Yes. And we're thinking about wounded warrior families. Can you tell me more about how families could be affected sure. by these cuts? Yeah, there there is a big potential. Uh, you know, nobody nobody wants to you know penalize wounded warriors. Nobody wants to penalize military families. But when you take as many cuts as we're dealing with in so many areas, it's very hard to say any group won't be affected at all. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody will feel effects one way or another. Uh, the administration, I think, they're sincere about wanting to exempt the wounded warrior programs. But what happens when the people who are doing their physical evaluations mm -hmm. or making their medical appointments have been furloughed? Right. That is going to affect them, and you, they could run into delays. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing, we, one of the things we talked with the administration about was dependent schools. Mm -hmm. Military people are very concerned that their children get quality education. Uh, well, all DOD is saying is we're going to make every effort to make sure that children get quality education and the schools don't lose their accreditation. Well... That's, you know, not real reassuring right. <laughs> because they're not saying that the teachers will be exempt from furloughs. So potentially so teachers could you, not be in the classroom that, or and kids could, might not meet their number of school days they must attend. Well, I don't think they'll meet the, uh, that's probably jumping to conclusions. Okay. But for example, if a teacher is furloughed that day, mm -hmm. it's possible that you may run into a situation where a, one teacher does two classes at once. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see, so, so the there may be that's that's right. Education. That's right. Uh, you have those kinds of issues. Commissaries. You know, you may be looking at reduced hours uh, of service. If if they're going to have fewer people available, mm -hmm. you know, the the operations and maintenance, mm -hmm. the power, the lights, the you know, all mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Uh, all of those could be cut back, and one way to save it is to reduce operating Wow. Hours. There's a lot of trickle-down effects it, that exactly. That's we just great, won't great know until right. it happens. Exactly. For the average person who sees a lot of these numbers about our debt, because we know that's why sequestration is happening, we have to find ways to save money, and the Congress needs to come to an agreement on how to do that. And so help us understand why it's important to work on these solutions now. Well, I think that's what, you know, people figure, gee, is the country breaking down? Is it really that bad? Do we have to do all these kinds of things? Uh, and I think one of the problems is we have been kind of ignoring it for a while now. Um, uh, several years ago, there was a commission that said, if we don't get back on the right fiscal track, right. we're going to be like Greece, where our national debt is... Uh, half again as big as all the goods and services that we put out, the gross domestic mm -hmm. product of the country. Well, the, we're right now at about 100%. Uh, in other words, our, our national debt just about equals one year of all the value of products and services the country puts out. What does that mean? Um, well, if, if you've been reading the papers, the whole world economy has been shaken because countries like uh, Ireland and Spain and Greece right. can't pay their bills. And the issue, what happens if the United States gets to that point? And we're, in a lot of people's minds, getting a lot closer than we're comfortable. So Steve, you painted a, a pretty grim picture for us. And I think a lot of people wanna know, is it possible to avoid the effects of sequestration? It, it's always possible. It's looking less likely. 
uh, you know, sequestration, you know, like we talked about, was supposed to be so bad that nobody wants it, and it, surely this will force us to do something more reasonable. And so far it hasn't. Now, sequestration hasn't actually happened yet, and, you know, a lot of people don't realize this isn't the first time we've run into sequestration. Okay. Um, we had sequestration uh, four times, I think, between 1985 and 1991. Wow. And in several of those instances, Congress fixed it after it took effect. Okay. That it had to go into effect before Congress felt enough pressure to do something. So that's a possibility. Will they make it go away? Not necessarily. Um, but there are things that could be done. You know, one of the problems is DOD is saying, you know, you're making me take all these cuts across the board. I could at least do better if I could make some judgment. So that's that's probably the least, you know, uh, politically awkward scenario where Congress just says, okay, we're not going to, you know, let you take fewer cuts, but we'll let you take them where they're smarter. Okay. You DOD leaders can decide to do that. There's a lot of sentiment and a lot of people in Congress who feel like MOA does mm -hmm. that the cuts to defense are too big, mm -hmm. that it is going to hurt readiness in, a, in an inappropriate way, and we ought to reduce the burden on DOD. That's always a possibility as well. And that's one of the reasons we're trying to mobilize our members mm -hmm. to go to Congress mm -hmm. uh, to say, let's stop this craziness right. and do it in a more responsible way that doesn't jeopardize our national security. Well, I think it's appropriate to ask that question is what individuals can do about it. And it sounds like suggested messaging to Congress is the way to start. That's right. If you want to go to MOA's website, www.moaa.org, and up in the upper left, there's a, a, a little link that says Contact Congress. Uh, and if you click on that, there's an alert that we have uh, asked our members to send their legislators.